this channel, if you could call it a channel, is the ADHD of channels. You notice down in the corner. I always get this wrong. No. No. There. You'll notice some bikes. I ride bikes quite a lot. It's my thing. And I quite enjoy it. Now, with the price of gas, I bought an e-bike about a year ago. <clears throat> mainly so I can get more exercise and so I could ride to work without paying gas prices my bike my bike bike sorry my car um, great long distance it's a Grand Tourer let's go with Grand Tourer also the Grand Tour has its final show soon on September 13th it's a Grand Tourer it doesn't like traffic. It doesn't like sitting in traffic. So I bought an e-bike. This e-bike that I bought has just had, let's call it its birthday. Whatever you want to call it. Let's call it its 1,000 kilometer service. Which cost me 80 bucks. There's nothing wrong, there was just a critical update to the controller and the motor. But other than that, it was actually pretty fucking pretty chill. So, let's talk bikes. Now, this is a bit of a wonderful precursor. I just realized, like, I can walk around the microphone. Um, this is a wonderful precursor. So the bike I own, among other bikes, is a Da Vinci E-Hatchet GRX. In Canadian dollars, they retail for $5,499 plus tax. I didn't pay that. But right now, and this is a 2022 model. This is a, this is a point. It seems that Da Vinci didn't actually do a 2023 model. Right now, they're 2100 Canadian. Here's a picture of my bike. What's the quote? This is my bike. There are many like it, but this one is mine. It's had a thousand kilometers on it. So I want to go through a few things and just... This is a kind of a weird two-part in one part video. Because even if you have an e-bike, you can have some range anxiety. I use this primarily for commuting. I don't run around too too much on it. Um, if I'm cycling, I cycle actually on a completely different bike, which is a Salsa Journeyman, um, which is soon to be upgraded. So let me just read the specs. The E-Hatchet is the limit-taunting electric-assisted gravel bike. Yes, this is a gravel bike. We built it to get you further, faster, and back again, thanks to a powerful and efficient Shimano motor. So explore the old roads you always skip. Plow straight into the fiercest headwinds. Seek out the psycho climbs and loose turns. Rain or shine, do it with confidence inspiring geometry perfected on the acoustic hatchet. Throw a leg over the e-hatchet and see where it takes you. Now, this is actually some pretty good marketing bump, I have to admit. Um, the bike is green. Caledone and there's a few things we'll talk about the negatives of it the frame is an aluminum optum so3 fork is a full carbon da vinci headset's an fsa c clamp is just a c clamp it's an alloy cnc handlebars are da vinci v2 pro stem is a v2 pro saddle is a v2 pro which i changed the seat post is a v2 comp uh the handlebar tape is super soft whatever Right, let's get into the good stuff. It's a GRX group set, RX80. So it's a Shimano. 
which is nice. The crank arms are Steps E6100s. The chainring is a Steps SM CRE 80R, which is a 47 tooth. Um, the cassette is a HG Shimano HG 811 speed, uh, 1134 tooth. And the chain is a chain. The front rims, uh, DaVinci V2 comps, front hub, formless CL25. I don't know who makes those. Rear rims, V2 comp. Rear hub is an FMA E-hub. God, this is boring. Spokes are Sapium stainless, 14 gram with nylock. The tires, which I do actually enjoy, is the um, Max's Refuse. As in, refuse to stop. There's 740 C's. Um, tan wall, Max Shield, although I have had punctures. The computers are Steps E700, the Shimano. The drive unit is a Shimano Steps E6100. And the battery is a Shimano Steps E8400. Sorry. Um, the drive unit, in case you're wondering, is a 250 watt, 60 Newton meters. And the battery is a 418 watt hour lithium. Now, specs. Yay. What's interesting is depending upon your weight. Now, <clears throat> actually, let's, let's, let's skip this. This bike's, my bikes are large. I should have got a medium. I'm not a tall fucker. I'm, I'm tiny. Um, but. It was on clearance. I got a large, which is fine. Suits me quite well. My South Sojournament is actually a small or an extra small. I'd have to look at it. But, so let's let's sidetrack a little bit, just for shits and giggles. I bought the bike from Andre Cycles, which is a very local cycle shop to me. Do a lot of Pinarello. Do a lot of really nice bikes. Um... <clears throat> Great service, great store, great staff, um, super, super useful, uh, useful, no, not useful, super helpful in anything you really know, and I'm a bit of a, I know it, but I don't know it, I probably come off as an absolute prick, but that's whatever you want, so I have a history with Da Vinci, not a long history, a bike's a bike, right? I bought a Da Vinci Silverstone, which I'll try and find a picture of and throw it up over here. A Da Vinci Silverstone, which is a road bike. At the time, I didn't like drop handlebars, so I switched it to flat bars. Actually, rise bars. I think it was like V3 rise bars, not from Da Vinci. Completely different company. I switched it to rise bars. The thing was an absolute weapon back to being a courier oh my god so much fun rip it around actually quite dangerous if i'm perfectly honest but then i set my brakes to be if you touch them if you touch the front brake you're going to go over the bars the back brake is going to lock up instantly because i like to stop and if i'm stopping i like to stop quickly so that was my first da vinci my second da vinci I'm not even entirely sure what the name of it is. Give me a second and I'll have a look. Is a Da Vinci Oslo, which is actually a flat bar commuter bike, um, which my girlfriend stole. So my girlfriend rides my Da Vinci Oslo, but that thing is a whole bunch of fun. Is it as whippy as a Silverstone? No. It's not, because the Silverstone was a road bike that I put bloody riser bars on and just ripped with. That thing, was an awful lot of fun, but wasn't the Silverstone. So, I ride a Salsa. I got into drop bars. My Salsa, I love my Salsa. It's a great bike. Maybe a little bit too small, but I do like twitchy geometry. That's me. I like to ride my bikes like I stole them. That's for sure. So let's talk about the hatchet. They say, depending on weight, size, terrain, 150k. 
on the battery range. Right now, I'm at 59.2. But the question you should ask yourself is, what's the battery life at? The battery life right now, and this is, you know, I've done a thousand K on it. It hasn't had that many cycles on the battery for charging, decharging. 59.2 kilometers. That was to and from work. Twice. And a quick rip today. So to and from work can be depending on the route you take and how you're feeling. You know, 11k there, 11k back, depending. So, but I take different routes. I don't get lost, but I do meander on my way home. So, I pulled 22.6k last week on Tuesday. On Thursday, I pulled 23.4. Today, just going out with the misses, I pulled 13.2. That's 59.2k. Now, at, after the to and from work, which is um, 22.6 plus 23.4. Near one five six. I should use a calculator, it's actually easier. Uh, six four. So that was 46k just to and from work, right? Plus the 13 plus the 13k today, 13.2 if we're counting. Um, when I started today's ride, the batteries. The battery indicator on the controller and the battery was at three bars. Very quickly into it, it dropped to two bars. Now, I have range anxiety. Tomorrow I have to go to work. So I'm going to ride. Two bars, technically, should get me to and from work without a problem. Now, there's different riding modes upon the Da Vinci E hatchet. There's eco, there's normal, and there's boost. Now, understand this is a pedal assist. This is not um, press a button and ride and just cruise. It is pedal assist. So it's putting in power for you to assist you riding. <clears throat> and just gets you past the impetus point faster. That's all it does doesn't really put much in you'll notice because laws that um, at 29.9 or 29.8 kilometers per hour the motor cuts out because you're only assisted to quote unquote 30 kilometers an hour does this thing rip 100% is it mental Depends on how you ride it. The way I ride it, yeah, it's fucking mental. I ride my bike like I stole it. The first two uh, rides last week, to and from work, were actually on normal mode. Not on high, just on normal. And today's ride was just on eco, so it's using less battery. I'm not going to get 150k out of it. And I'll tell you why I'm not going to get 150k out of it. I've got close. 120. But I've never got 150k out of it. Even on just riding eco mode. And I generally do. When I commute, I generally do just ride eco mode. <clears throat> Between where I am and to work. And I, I made some notes. Look, an unplanned, an unplanned plug for Scratch Labs. Um, going to work, call it 11k. The rise to work is 89 meters and the fall is 35 meters. Or...
for most people because I do watch everything's been done um, that's 191 feet of climbing and 114.8 feet of descending so in basic terms my ride to work is flat uphill down uphill down and then just uphill even if you're riding eco and i do even on eco mode i'm ripping up the bridge which is the major hill to get across the river from the south shore into montreal and then after you get off the bridge it's just uphill so even on eco mode back and forth I've only got 120 121 K out of this because I'm riding uphill the motor is working now the way back it's 40 meters up 93 meters down which is 131 feet climbing and 305 feet descending the ride to work they say is 45 minutes the ride home is 41 minutes because it's all fucking downhill and I tell you I think my best time getting home is 35 now there are some fun areas upon my road home one of them is at the bottom of Parc La Fontaine right down a cycle path because I generally ride cycle paths so I don't go riding on the roads um, there is a very steep descent a very very steep descent it's very short but it's very punchy now remember you're running a 47 tooth front and 11 tooth or 11 34 on the back the fastest I've got this bike is 48.9 kilometers per hour bear in mind the motor cuts out at 30k The rest of it is my fat ass and gravity and booking on the pedals. I want to get 50 down that hill. And I'm not going to change any gearing. I want to get 50 on that hill. I'm pretty sure if I get a run up with the lights being correct. And no idiots. The problem is when you're descending this hill. It's a delivery for a hospital and there's some parking there. Close to 50k to stopping is a problem. You may end up in the side of a car. So you have to be a little bit careful. Right. So positives of this bike. I'm not going to dispute them on the range. Um, I do rain. I do ride up a lot of hills. But I do have a couple of four balls with this bike. Not major. And I highly recommend you buy it. I really recommend you buy it. At $2,100, go buy this bike. It's brilliant. The first thing is when you freewheel, this thing sounds like a rattlesnake. It is so loud. I need to take it to the shop and ask them to remove the fucking clicky, click, 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 click. It is so loud. It is ridiculous. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is because the bottle is actually on the down tube where your normal bottle mount is rather than being integrated into the down tube and this is a 2022 not a 2023 because I'm pretty sure if, if Da Vinci did this um, in 2023 the battery would have been integrated. Um, when you're reaching for your water bottle you have to reach to the back which normally you just reach to the front tube. Now you have to reach to the back, which takes a little bit of getting used to. And it is a bit of a pain in the ass. You start having to do the wide-legged um, grandpa cycle thing. But that's it. The other thing, apart from the puncture, but that is an entirely different story for a different video, um, where I will do a video on the what I feel are the cycling essentials other than helmet and lights there's a few others that i feel that most people um 
dismiss. Um, the other thing that annoys me is the brake pads. Now, there's nothing wrong, right, with the brake pads. They're GRXs. Um, but I do ride this thing like it's a gravel bike because it's a fucking gravel bike. I'm, I, I'm waving here going, because it's a gravel bike. You can't see it, but it's right there. Um, mud. Dirt. I get this thing absolutely covered head to toe and shit. Destroy it. Twice now. The brakes have got contaminated from me riding through mud and crap. The first time involved me coming to a corner way too fast Braking for it, the brakes did nothing, and I ended up going ass over tit into a bush. The second time was actually on the service, where they know how I ride my bike. They know me quite well at the bike store. <coughs> so they just took the brake pads out and sanded them down to actually get some clean material. Um, with the tyres, it's a very comfortable ride. It's a good ride. It's a very fast bike. If you've got some legs, you're booking. It's a no-brainer. If you ignore the four balls, if you're just going to use this just for putzing around or whatever, if you ignore the brakes, that's me going out getting absolutely covered in shit in the rain, in the mud, being an idiot. If you ignore the fact that you can't actually um, accidentally um, overclock, is the best term for it, um, hack the bike so it goes faster. Shimano, you can't do that. If you ignore that, and this is, for me, it's a commuting bike. So, um, And if you ignore the placement of the war bottle cage... $2,100, it's a fucking steal. Now, the reason for this video, the reason for this video is because range anxiety was the major topic. I want to review this bike, and the bike is, honest to God, 2100 bucks. buy it. Stupid. Also, Da Vinci, I know you're making a new, um, a new hatchet in carbon. I'd like a discount, please. Um, but discount the problems. It's a bit heavy. Um, I can't remember. I think it's like thirty-eight pounds for a small. I think that's what they said. Let me let me look at my um weight. I did actually pause the pull. Yeah, it's 38.4 pounds or 17.42 kilograms. That's for a medium complete bike. Um, mine's a large, so it's got a little bit heavier, so I'm pretty closer to 40 pounds. Um, if you just count the problems, it's an absolute ripper. And I, and I checked YouTube. No one reviewed this. Why? Okay, 5,400 plus tax. You're close to six grand. I paid less than that a year ago because on discount now it's a 2022. And you can still pick them up. I'm looking at a store in Toronto that has them at 38% off. $2,100 from a $5,500 retail price. Yeah, it's two years old and they're trying to clear out shit. But it's a quick bike. It's not light. It's a quick bike. It's a good looking bike as well. And it handles like a gravel bike. It's ridiculous. Anyway, I digress. Range anxiety. And there will be a follow up to this video after this video clip ends. I'm at 59.2. I started my ride today at three bars. 
it dropped to two very quickly. I have to do 22 or 23k tomorrow. So the real decision is, do I charge my bike? I can. The charger's right behind me. I can just plug the fucking thing in. But for real world stuff, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna ride it tomorrow on normal. Unless I really bitch out and go eco trying to save the battery. I'm gonna ride to work on normal. I'm gonna ride back on eco probably because I'll be scared. If the battery dies, I've ridden this. I did it today for a little bit. I rode it today with no motor. It feels like you're riding a downhill bike. It's heavy. You've got a lot of drag through those motor pulleys. So I'm gonna normal boost it tomorrow to get to work. And on the way home, I'm gonna eco it. And if the battery shits the bed, I have a massive bridge, which is a very long uphill, a downhill, and then a short-ish, punchy uphill to get home. So, let's see how it goes. Wish me luck. I may not look this great tomorrow, although this moustache is amazing. I may not look this great tomorrow. I may be swearing more than usual. Because I fucked up. I can just plug it in. But I really want to give some real worldy numbers to um, actual an actual e-bike from 2022. So, I'll see you all tomorrow with an update. Or some crying. Who knows. Peace. Mm, 12 degrees outside, 71% humidity. Got my jacket on. Hey, welcome to Range Anxiety. Let's grab my local. Most important thing, water bottle. Let's fire the bike up. Let's grab a helmet. And let's see what we can see. Doink. So, like I said, Water bottle, battery. Let's turn this bad boy on. Shimano stops. Gonna hit normal. This is from yesterday. Let's clear that. Okay. Two bars. Range 33 kilometers, we're on normal mode. <clears throat> so, let's see how this goes. Um, like I said in the video, it's all uphill. So, let's figure out. Maybe I'm gonna be riding back over the Jacques Cartier um, today. Sunglasses, yes. Um, because I've run out of bloody battery. But we'll figure it out and we'll get back to talking later on. Wish me luck. So, three quarters of the way through, I'm down to, well, I got to work. Three quarters of the way through, I had to switch from normal to eco. That was 7.6, 11.8k in, 9.8k in, I had to switch to eco mode. Range right now is 16k. Just about enough to get home. So, let's see. I'll update you later. Right, here we go. You come up. It says 22 range. 
This will be interesting. Eco mode's brutal. So, home, battery didn't die, which is pretty. <coughs> 11.6 distance which is shorter than normal I did take a slightly shorter route um, range is left at 6 31 minute ride average speed was 21.9 K top speed 56 kilometers an hour yeah so made it range of 6 but we'll get back on the computer and we'll figure that one out so I'm looking very English and very dapper. So let's go. Um, we started with a range of 33k. This mine. Remember, um, they say 150. We're gonna kick. We're gonna kick through pull the numbers on actually what I've done on this bike. Remember I'm riding uphill predominantly. Oh, hello. Riding uphill predominantly on the way to work. So, drop to one bar on the way to work. I bottled it a little bit and <laughs> went straight to eco mode just to save it. Now, there's a difference between um, numbers and the reason why there's a difference in the numbers is because I changed mode. When you're on normal mode, it's going to give you less range because it's putting more actually into the bike. And then to save it, I put it onto eco mode just to get to work. And then I went eco mode on the way home just to be safe. Could I have realistically with a 16 kilometer range at work put it on normal mode and just rode normally I don't think so I think if I'd stuck on normal mode I would have been hauling a close to 40 pound bike up the bridge Pedaling made it a little hot out to do it. So to save that, and because of range anxiety, I switched it to eco mode, and I made it home with 6k to spare. Now, just, just for shits and giggles, let me just check very quickly. He turns the bike on. The range on the bike, actually on normal right now, is four kilometers. One, two, three, four. So, I don't think I would have made it home on normal mode. So I made the wise decision to um, drop it to eco, so I didn't have to think. Now, eco mode is putting in less power to your pedal strokes. So normally where I ride on normal, and I do charge the bike, and I always keep it pretty well charged, um, you're getting less back from the motor and the battery <laughs> than you are um, when you're on normal or high. High is the most fun mode, but you will nuke the range. So let's do some math very quickly to wrap this up. And we will talk about the bike so where were we at? I can't remember where we at. We're at 13.5. We're at 40 something K, right? We're at 59.2 K. That's with two trips to work on normal mode plus a quick rip with the misses. So we're at 59.2 K. I pulled 
11 point. It shows me if I scroll through the video very quickly. I pulled 11.6 today. So let's grab a calculator because I'm being lazy. 59.2 plus 11.6, 70.8 kilometers. That's what you get out of the battery. Now, this all depends upon the terrain you're riding. Like I say earlier in the video, I'm riding nothing but uphill the entire time on the way to work. And I don't sit in free will. I sit and I pedal. So I'm using battery and I'm using power and I'm using motor, especially up the bridge, especially up all the hills. You're using power. It means I don't get to work sway. I'm getting some exercise. I'm working my legs. I'm spinning at a good cadence. It's good. Should I have charged the bike? 100%. Then it'd be, I'd be less anxious about being able to make it home. So, when someone says it's 150k range, I assume that's 150k in eco mode on a very flat surface. Add hills, add weather, add wind. That range is going to change. So, you have to get used to um, your commute. You have to get used to what you're doing and learn what the bike's going to do. Right? It makes It makes sense. I know that I can pretty much go to and from work on normal mode two weeks essentially and then I have to charge the bike so I can get four trips to and from work remember this is a commuting bike and then I have to charge the bike you just need to know this information and do your due diligence and actually get on the bike and ride now Da Vinci seems to have a very interesting strategy looking at their um, past models. <coughs> the E-Hatchet came out in 2022. There was no E-Hatchet model for 2023. I don't know if there's going to be an E-Hatchet model for, well, not for 2024 because we're in 2024. Maybe in 2025, maybe they're going to release one. I know they're releasing a new hatchet with slightly different geometry. Um, in a carbon frame. I'd still like a discount, please, Da Vinci. That would be lovely. I would give you a rather wonderful review. Actually, you know, I'll give you a realistic review because I don't bullshit reviews. But give it to me cheap. Or lend it to me. Actually, lend it to me for a couple of months and let me go kick the crap out of it. And then by the time I've kicked the crap out of it, you won't want it back. So you let me keep it. Anyway. Da Vinci Bikes had three. Two currently in this room and one I sold to um, my ex-girlfriend's boyfriend, my, my Silverstone. I like their bikes. Made in Canada. They're good bikes. The hatchet or the e-hatchet. Because people are chucking them out cheap. Yeah, it's two years old. Who cares? Does it have a few flaws? 100% mainly the bottle cage placement because the battery is on the down chip um, buy it straight out buy it if you can find one right now on clearance cheap buy it $2100 is what I'm seeing right now buy it it's a good bike it's a solid bike the frame's lifetime guaranteed. Carbon fork. Alley frame. Fairly big battery. Good motor. It's fast. It's agile. It's a gravel bike. With slicks on it. Which is weird because when you, when you buy the bike. And it's sold as a gravel bike with slicks. Which is kind of weird. You'd think it, they do slightly knobbly tyres. But whatever. Not going to complain about that. I like riding slicks anyway. So, the Da Vinci E-Hatchet. 
two thumbs up. Great bike. And I hope DaVinci make another one for 2025. And I hope people get to enjoy that frame set, that geometry, and those components. The GRX is a great set of um, running gear for it. It's a good, fast, agile bike. But it's also comfortable at the same time. So, if you're looking for an e-gravel bike, and yes, there are other options, newer options out there, but they're going to cost you way more money than one of these on clearance. So, if you can find one in your size, go buy one. I highly recommend it. A thousand cow mine, still good. And I do not treat my bikes nicely. I treat them as tools. I treat them as a tool that get me from A to B in the f shortest time humanly possible. Now, final note, could I ride my salsa to work? Yes, and I have ridden my salsa to work, but when it's outside and it's bloody stinking hot, you're a sweaty mess. An e-bike allows you to get some exercise easier on the hills and you don't turn up to work looking like Jabba the Hutt's butt crack it's worth it so go buy a Da Vinci e-hatchet because they're a ton of fun they're hilarious bikes and I've had no problems with mine and essentially I ride it like I stole it and like it's someone else's bike. I kick the shit out of it. And it's still kicking. Going strong. But then. That's like all of my Da Vinci bikes. The Silverstone. Um, the Silverstone 1. When I had it. Kicked the crap out of it. Raced it. Just silly bike. And same with the Oslo. The Oslo's still going strong. Barely any maintenance. It is a good brand so go buy a da vinci bike even if it's not an e-hatchet even the hatchet like which is now on sale for last year like the 2024's hatchets are on sale the gravel bikes great group set great frame really really fucking such a nice looking bike go look don't discount da vinci their bikes are great they're cheaper but don't think that cheaper means they're not as good. They're just as, they're just as good as the competitors. And in some cases, considering the price, better. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck. And remember, you can always upgrade components later over time. So find a Da Vinci on sale. Go buy it because they're fucking brilliant. I'm going to go finish my beer and finish editing this video. Thank you for watching me ramble for probably close to 40 minutes um one of these days i'll figure out what this channel is take care thanks for watching have a good one